Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, and it's dedicated to every one of you who subscribes to my channel. I wouldn't do any of this without you guys. Thank you. Today we're building the founder and leader of Shadaloo, Vega, I, sorry, I mean M. Bison. If you don't know the messy story, let me break it down for you. In Japan, Bison is Vega, Vegan is Balrog, and Balrog is Bison. There were worries about lawsuits, don't matter now. The best way to explain Bison is simply stating how he got his powers. He literally drove all the goodness from his soul by sheer force of will and developed a new soul power called Psycho Power. Pretty metal. Now he's obsessed with taking over the world, and that about covers it. By the way, for you who actually do pay attention to the background clips, yes, I suck at Street Fighter. I'm much better at Mortal Kombat, hence why I have the entire MK roster waiting to be turned into videos. I'm also pretty good at Darkstalkers, aka Halloween Street Fighter. Really cool game, but really weird. Love it. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. We're using standard point array to make things easy, and we are multi-classing, so keep an eye on those minimums. We'll start things off with Charisma at 15. You want to rule the world? You'll have to gather an army. And you can't make an army if no one likes you. Strength will follow with 14. You are a massive, massive person with massive strength. Dex will be a 13. For someone that big, you are actually pretty agile. And Telekinesis might help with that, though. Khan will be next at 12. No reason for this, I just feel you should have some pretty good health. Intelligence will be rather low with a 10, and we're gonna have to dump Wisdom. Your origin is literally driving all the good out of your soul. I don't think you have good impulse control. Bison is a human. Custom lineage grants you a free feat and skill with your stat improvements. Place plus two into strength. For your free feat, Fey Touch adds plus one to charisma and gives you two spells. You can cast these spells with spell slots or once per long rest without a spell slot. For your spells, Gift of Alacrity lets you add a D8 to your initiative for eight hours. Misty Step is a 30 foot teleportation you can make with a bonus action. For your free skill, take Arcana. For background, grab Persuasion and Athletics. Let's start things off with some Psycho Power. Level 1 Sorcerers start off with two skills. Take Deception and Intimidation. Spellcasting gives you Psycho Power. You begin with four cantrips and two spells, but before we get to your spells, you have a Sorceress Origin. Because your powers are Corrupted Form of Soul Power, let's go with Divine Soul, found in Xanathar's. Divine Magic gives you access to both Cleric and Sorcerer spells. You also gain a free spell. Inflict Wounds is a melee spell attack that inflicts 3d10 necrotic damage on a hit. Favored by the Gods grants you 2d4 that you can add to a failed saving throw or missed attack, once per short or long rest. For your spells, Chill Touch fires a blast of necrotic energy at a target within 120 feet and dealing 1d8 necrotic damage on a hit. And now the target can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn. Mage Hand creates a spectral hand that allows you to move objects up to 30 feet away and up to 10 pounds. Thunder Clap releases a blast around you, forcing everyone within 5 feet to make a con save or take 1d6 thunder damage. Mage Armor gives you an AC of 13 plus dex when not wearing armor. Shield adds plus 5 to your AC as a reaction. You get one more cantrip, take what you want. Level 2 Sorcerer's Gain, Font of Magic. This grants you sorcery points equal to your sorcerer level. Right now, you can burn points to regain spell slots or burn spell slots to regain sorcery points. For your new spell, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your Charisma modifier. Level 3 Sorcerers receive Meta Magic. These are ways to alter your spells by spending sorcery points. You gain two Meta Magic options at this level, and for those options, Empowered Spell costs one sorcery point, and now you can reroll a number of damage dice equal to your Charisma modifier. Quicken Spell turns one spell with a casting time of one action into a bonus action by spending two sorcery points. You also receive second level spells. For your new spell, Thunder Wave is like Thunder Clap, but way stronger. Now every creature with an 15 foot cube centered on you must make a con save or take 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed back by 10 feet from you. Okay, we need to start working on your combat capabilities. I feel this is kind of late in the game, but you weren't always a giant bastard, and I mean a physically giant bastard. 
Level 1 fighters begin with a fighting style. Unarmed fighting makes your unarmed strikes 1d8 and you can automatically deal 1d4 damage to a creature you are grappling. Second Wind heals you for 1d10 plus your fighter level with a bonus action once per short or long rest. Level 2 fighters receive Action Surge. You can now grant yourself a free action once per short or long rest. Your character level 5 now, Chill Touch and Thunderclap now do 2 damage dice each. Level 3 fighters gain their subclass. Time to make you an evil inspiring leader. Banneret found in Sword Coast enhances your forces during battle. Rally Cry passes on your second wind onto other people. When you use second wind you can now choose up to 3 allies within 60 feet of you that can hear you. And each one heals HP equal to your fighter level. Level 4 fighters earn our first ability score improvement, bump up strength for better attacks. Level 5 fighters now have extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. Level 6 fighters earn another ability score improvement. Place this into Charisma for better spell attack and DC. Level 7 Banneret Fighters receive Royal Envoy. First, you gain a free skill of your choice from Animal Handling, Insight, Intimidation, or Performance. You already have Intimidation, so take whatever you want. I don't really see you petting puppies or going Saturday Night Fever, so maybe Insight. But you only hang out with other bastards, so Insight's not that difficult. You now double the proficiency bonus for Persuasion Checks. Level 8 Fighters earn another Ability Score Improvement to cap off Strength. Level 9 Fighters gain Indomitable. You can now re-roll a failed saving throw, including death saves once per long rest. Level 4 Sorcerers earn another ability score improvement. Let's grab a feat. We are not going to be able to bump up your con anymore, and with Sorcerer's Terrible Health, you will not be boss HP. Tough gives you double your current character level in HP, which adds 26 at this level, and every level after adds plus 2 to your total HP. For your spell, Charm Person forces a wisdom save on one humanoid within 30 feet of you. Should they fail, they are now charmed by you for one hour. They will remain charmed until the spell ends, you harm them, or or they see you harm one of their allies. You get another cantrip, go nuts. Level 5 Sorcerers now have access to 3rd level spells. For your new spell, Fly grants you a flying speed of 60 feet while you maintain this spell for 10 minutes. Level 6 Divine Soul Sorcerers receive Empowered Healing. Now when you are an ally within 5 feet of you uses a spell to heal, you can spend 1 sorcery point to reroll any number of those dice. You can do this once per turn. For your new spell, Fireball unleashes a blast out to 150 feet and causes an explosion. Everyone within a 20 foot radius sphere must make a deck save or take 8d6 fire damage. Level 7 Sorcerers gain 4th level spells. For your new spell, Charm Monster is like Charm Person, but now you can target any creature, not just a humanoid. Make sure to use this to get the only fighter you're afraid of's best friend to fight for you. That's right, I've watched the actual movie. Go do it, it's great. Level 8 Sorcerers earn our final ability score improvement, cap off Charisma. For your new spell, take what you want, we're good for this level. Your character level 17 now. Chill Touch and Thunderclap now do 4 damage dice each. Level 9 Sorcerers receive 5th level spells for your new spell. Telekinesis allows you to move objects with your mind for 10 minutes while you maintain this spell. You can move objects weighing up to 1,000 pounds and can move it 30 feet with an action each turn. You can target a creature and force a strength check versus your spellcasting ability. Should you succeed, the creature is now restrained as you move them around. On each turn, you must repeat the contest to maintain the telekinetic hold. Level 10 Sorcerers gain a new meta magic option. For your new meta magic, take what you want. You're actually pretty good. For your new spell, Far Step is a 60 foot teleportation you make with a bonus action. And you can maintain this spell for one minute and spam teleport each turn with a bonus action. You gain your final cantrip, have fun picking. 
Our final level is level 11 sorcerers, and now you have six level spells. For your final spell, Spirit Shroud unleashes your psycho power with a bonus action, and you begin to radiate dark power while you maintain this spell for one minute. While this spell is active, any attack you make deals 1d8 damage of your choice. This damage can be radiant, necrotic, or cold, which you choose when you cast this spell. Any creature that takes this damage cannot regain hit points until the start of your next turn. Additionally, when a creature starts his turn within 10 feet of you, you can choose to reduce its speed by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. This is actually not a 6th level spell, but a 3rd level spell, meaning you can charge this up to higher levels and add damage. More on that in a second though. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 20, Dex 13, Con 12, Intelligence 10, Wisdom 8, Charisma 20. Your total levels are Fighter 9, Sorcerer 11. Let's dive in. Your Psycho Power is amazing. Your Chill Touch deals 48 necrotic damage out to 120 feet. Maxing out Inflict Wounds, you can deal 8d10 necrotic damage on a hit. You can also max out Spirit Shroud and deal an extra 4d8 necrotic damage with every spell and unarmed strike you make. You're also an inspiring leader or a feared one depending on how you want to do this. You can charm enemies, your persuasion is adding plus 17, and you can heal your allies when you heal. Downside. Firstly and mainly, your AC is only 14 and your total HP is 140 taking the average. This is not boss level. Multi-classing and standard point array don't always make a good character. I'm sorry, it's just what I have to do to make these builds accessible to everyone. Rolling for stats though will bring this up. And you know what? You are a fighter. You can wear armor if you want. I know you're all partial about the red suit and the metal shoulder pads on it for some reason. Wear armor. It's okay. You also have a lot of concentration spells, which is every spellcaster. It's just annoying, which is why I have to list it. But you know what? That's why you have Balrog and Bison. I, I mean Balrog and Vega. Damn name changes. Make your team handle all the fighting, and then you unleash your dark power to win the day. Thank you for joining me today. Make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build each week on YouTube and Spotify. Now live on Patreon, it's a battle of the werewolves, or more importantly, Ice Werewolf versus Kung Fu Werewolf. It's free from Soul Leader versus John Taubin from Darkstalkers.